In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the calendar feature of system.io, so no need for external platforms like Calendly anymore, how to embed it in your website or in your sales funnel, and how to use this as an automation tool in your pipeline. Super exciting. Uh, if you're new to this channel, my name is Rihanna. I help small business owners set up simple systems to attract more clients, to grow their business with ease. If you're new to this channel and you want to not miss out on the upcoming tutorial, hit subscribe and let's dive in. So here we are in the dashboard. This is my System.io tutorials dashboard. So that's why there's nothing in it. This is how most of you probably are starting. So where we can find the calendar option is here in the CRM system calendar. So if we click on this one and we're gonna create an event here, all your bookings are gonna show up here. And here is your availability. So the first thing we want to do is set your availability here. So select the day. You can add the time to it when you're available. Let's say from 9 to 6. And this is how you, and even you can add two different time slots. So for example, you could say till 2 and then you have a, a short break. And then from 3 till 6 p.m., for example, is another time slot. And then here you can add data specific availability. So where you uh, are extra available. So let's say on this Monday between 2 and 3, you're also available. But only this the date of this week, you can add that to it here. And also the unavailability. Now, don't forget to click on save. Very important. Oh, we don't want to have this one save and then this is set now the next thing we want to do before we create an event is go to settings because we want to integrate one of the tools to actually be able to hop on a call with them so that can either be, be a zoom or a google meet that can be added to it or you can have a phone call i'm going to show you to that in a bit so all you have to do is just click on the zoom and you're going to connect it it is that simple it's like two clicks. Make sure your Zoom is open or make sure your Google Meet is connected. And then that is set up. So if that is a problem, please drop it underneath the, in the comments underneath the video. And I can record another video about that. But that should be super simple. Now we're going to go back to our calendar. And we're going to create an event. We click on create new event. You can choose between an individual event or a group event. Group event would be multiple people are involved. We're going to create an individual event right now. Confirm. Let's call it a uh, discovery call. I don't like that <laughs> because it doesn't say anything what is in it for the client. But let's say discovery call. You can select how long the call is. You can change your picture if you want. The host name is automatically the name of your, um, your dashboard. So this would be Rihanna. And now the location. You can pick an online meeting, a phone, or a personal location. Now, for most of you, it's not going to be personal. It's either way going to be phone, and then it's going to uh, ask you to add your phone number to it, or it's going to be online meeting. And now you can select one of those, if you've integrated it, um, to be as um, the online meeting place where the links and the emails that are going to be sent are going to be automatically creating a link to one of those platforms. Or it can be an external link if you work with a, a third party platform. So that's what we want to choose here. Then there is description. You can have a short description. I always like to add something that if there is no availability uh, on the day that they would like to schedule a call, that they can send me an email um, because I want to stay highly approachable. Then the availability is when this call that you're setting up, because you can set up multiple events, this call that you're setting up, when do you want this to be able to be booked? So for example, if you offer a workshop and you say within the next coming 10 days, you can book a call. So you want to put that in there. Um, here you can select global availability, and then it's picking the time slots that we set up here in the, in the global settings. Or you can say for this specific time, uh, it's only on Tuesday for uh, from three to five, for example. So for now we do the global one. And then you have here a couple of options. And I love that they've added this because you can say how many calls you actually want to have on a day. So if you say every 30 minutes, it's available for them to book a call or every on the hour, for example, 
but I can only accept five calls a day. So they, you, they can see less call availability if their calls have been booked already. And then the buffer time is also amazing because you can say, I want uh, at least 15 minutes before an event that is booked and then another 15 minutes after the event is booked so you can write down some notes. And then the time zone, I always want to um, have this one on because I wouldn't want them to get confused about my time zone, especially because I'm moving all the time. <laughs> all right, we're going to save and preview now. And this is what it looks like. Here now you can see if they want to click on the Monday, they have availability within this time slot in the time zone that they are currently in. So whatever time zone they're in, it's going to be automatically adapted. And here is the information. So now we have this, but this is not a link. And this is where a lot of people are struggling with. This is not a link that you can share. So what we need to do is add this event to your website or a sales funnel. So let me show you now how to do that. So we're going to go to sites and you either way have built a website. We usually build websites on blogs or you have a sales funnel. It's kind of the same process. I'm going to show you how. So this is uh, one that I've used to just show something that I wanted to uh, use as a tutorial for the video here. So let's say we take this page. And this is now an opt-in page. It doesn't matter. Whatever page website you have, you scroll down all the way until you find this feature, calendar. And then you just drag it into your uh, funnel page or your website. And now you see what this looks like. And so this is not really on brand. So when we click on this, we can still change everything. And this is the cool part because now we can make it actually into our branding. So let's say these are my branding colors. It's more red with the black and the grayish. You can see how everything is changing when I, I do this. So it's really cool. This is really ugly, by the way. <laughs> but this is really nice because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, the other things I'm usually not really touching. The event you want to have selected on discovery call and then you can change these kind of things. So now it's called step one. Sorry, the colors are really bothering me. Let's put that like this. Yeah. Okay. So step one, uh, you can change whatever you want. I normally leave this because it's very clear and very common how people perceive those uh, booking events. Um, they're going to go to the next step and what kind of time format you want. Now I'm from Europe. I usually do this, but otherwise you can always use this one as well. Then the next one is the form. So now we're in step two. Here you can add a short description, uh, ask them to fill in the details. And now there's a really cool thing here as well, because you can add questions. And the answer to these questions are going to be sent into the email that you receive for the confirmation of the booking that you also going to receive when uh, system.io sends the reminder for the call one hour before. So it's very nice to have some information already beside these details. So you click on add question and the question comes here. You can just change the title here and you can add a placeholder text if you want to uh, want to. Uh, what is whatever that is and you can make it mandatory if you want it or not and you can add the next question and they're all going to come underneath each other. The only issue that I've been running into so far, but I probably they're going to change it very quickly, is that I cannot move question two now to question one. So you need to think clearly about which question you want to have first and which second. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you is here you see first name, last name, email, phone. Now you can change this if you say I don't need uh, their last name, for example. You can select something else, company name. I always like to know um, email we need to keep phone. I don't uh, I usually don't care about. So you could use something else. Now, what I was struggling with, um, with the business owners that I'm working with, I want to know how long they've been in business. This gives me a lot of information about, um, well, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant, um, but I cannot select it here. So what I was doing in the beginning is using text number because I don't uh, need any text number information from them. And then I was just changing the placeholder text to how long have you been in business for? Now, there's something new that System.io did. And so this is all clear, right? So when you're clear, you click on save and it's it's there. 
Now I want to show you, we don't want to save this because we don't want to have this on our page. We're going to go to contacts, which is empty here, obviously. And in the contacts, we can now create a new box. So let's say here we add a contact and you can say add new custom field. And this is like um, certified date, for example, and I, and I save that. So now this is being added to my contacting and now I can select that in the calendar booking overview. Oh, there's something that I didn't show you. That's not smart that I didn't keep it now. Let me see if I can still work on it. Okay. Yes, it's still there. So what I want to show you is always, always, always check the mobile version because sometimes it gets squeezed in. As you can see here, we don't want that. We want to give it a little bit more breathing space. So you click on the section and you can increase the padding. You can increase the margin, whatever you think is necessary to uh, give it a little bit more space. So now I want to give some more space inside as well. So we're going to go here to the padding on the top and left and right. And now it looks already way much better and easier for my clients to fill it in on the mobile version. Then we're going to check here. Nothing changed. Everything is the same. You're right. Okay. So that's it. If that was helpful, please give a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet and watch the next video. So there is so many cool things about system.io that I still want to share with you. And I hope to see you in the next one.